In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create untyped data sets at runtime. If you'll recall from a previous video on data set concepts, we learned that the benefit of, of uh, untyped data sets is that they are late bound. So you can make changes to them at runtime. You can determine a structure at runtime and you're not locked into any one given structure. Now, in many cases, you'll want to know that structure up front. So in that case, you'll use type data sets. But there will be occasions where an untyped data set will be of benefit. So what we're going to do to build this demonstration is go through some very similar steps to the previous videos. What I'm going to do first of all is go to our server explorer, find our data source, which is the pubs database, and drag and drop the employee table onto our designer surface. After just a moment, we'll select our SQL data adapter and then we'll get to our properties window. And I'll select configure data adapter. The data adapter configuration wizard appears. We've seen this a number of times, so I'm not going to take the time to explain it now. But we'll go ahead and click the next button. We'll select our data connection. We'll use SQL statements for this demo. That looks great. We'll select everything from the employee table. And uh, all of the, the select, insert, update, and delete statements are created for us in the data adapter. We'll select the finish button. The next thing that we're going to do is go to our toolbox, to our data tab, and select a data set and drag and drop it into the design surface. It'll ask us if we want to create a data set. And by default, it'll select type data set. But what we want to do is select an untyped data set and select OK. The next thing I want to do is go to my properties window and change the name of our data set to DS employee. Now I want to add two controls. I'm going to go to uh, Windows Forms and select a button which we'll put in the lower right hand corner. And then I'm going to also select a data grid and plop that on our form right there. And we're not going to do any binding because again, the, it won't really help us. We don't know what our data set looks like at this point. So I'm going to click on the design surface on the form to get to the form load. And I'm going to cut and paste some code in here to create the columns for our data table dynamically and then also fill the, uh, the, uh, the data set from the SQL data adapter and bind the data grid. Okay, so let me take some time to explain each line of code. First of all, we, what we've done is create a new data table and initialize this name as employee. Then to that data table object, we're going to reference this columns collection and add a series of columns. Now let me just state here that when you're uh, designing untyped data sets at runtime, that there's a lot of different ways to do this. And I've given some code, if we scroll down underneath this section here, uh, and I even note that there are several ways to create table and column objects uh, pretty much on the fly, and I've given some other examples. This is just one approach to maybe five or six different approaches that you can take, and they each have advantages. This is one of the quickest ways to just add columns to your data sets data tables. And what we basically do is call the columns.add. We give it the name of the column and then also the type of the column. And notice that we use type get type and then pass in a string that represents an actual type uh, to add the column. So after we've you know added nine columns, then we'll go down and actually call our SQL data adapter one dot fill. We'll pass in the data set which is DS employee and then the name of the table that we'll use which is employee. And then at that point we should have a populated data set if we did everything correctly. The next thing we'll need to do then, since uh, the data grid does not have a foreknowledge of what the data set looks like, we're going to have to tell it to set the data binding by calling the set data, data binding method. And again, we pass in the data set name and the table we want to bind to. Let's go ahead and save this, and then let's run it. And if we did everything correctly in the form load, we should see our employees table, and we do. Notice that our employees table appears. We can see all the columns. Very good. Now what we want to do is add one more line of code, and this is going to uh, demonstrate how you're going to access a particular 
row or column of a given data table when you don't have the benefit of IntelliSense and you don't have the benefit of the, the actual names that, uh, of the tables and the names of the columns like you do in a uh, type, strongly typed data set. So what I'm going to do is go back to our form designer and double click on our button that gives us the kind of the header and the footer of our function. And then I'm going to cut and paste some code in here as well. And I didn't paste the entire line of code because I want to show you what happens as we try to reference uh, the first name of the first row and the first column, or I'm sorry, just the first name column of the first row. So I'm going to have to type in the name of the data set, employee dot tables collection, and I can reference it still by using the name of the tables collection. But unfortunately, I didn't get uh, when I if I were to click the dot, the name of the employees table doesn't appear. Or when I click it here, employee doesn't show up because it has no knowledge ahead of time, like a strongly typed data set does, that we have an employee table. So we're going to have to just do this in a very generic fashion by typing in the tables collection, employee, and this might resemble what you used to have to do in classic ADO. So then we're going to have to reference the rows collection item, first row, and then to get to the columns collection, we can't, we're going to have to kind of do this back-to-back -back parentheses, uh, and then we can type in F name. Again, it would have been nice if we just clicked uh, rows sub-zero dot and have it show all the columns that are within that um, employee table, but alas, we can't do that. So at any rate, what we'll do is go ahead and run this again, and we'll test out that last piece of functionality. Click the button, and it says the first name is Paulo. Very good. So I think the moral of the story is that while untyped data sets do have their benefits, they are a little bit more work for the developer. You're going to have to add the data tables that you want in that data set manually, and you're going to have to add the columns manually. Now in the next video, I'm going to show a way that you can do this, still have it load at runtime, still be somewhat dynamic, but you can predefine the tables and columns in code using a, uh, a form-based collections editor to add your tables and your columns. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.